from support. Thank you so much again for the opportunity to provide testimony. Thank you, Paige. Kevin Fitz. Hi, Kevin. Yeah, hi. See you. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you, yes. Yeah, very good. Very good. Uh, good morning, Chair Sanchez and members of the Behavioral Health Committee. My name is Kevin Fitz. I'm a volunteer with the Oregon Mental Health Consumers Association. I'm here to testify in support of HB 2086. Um, Thank you to Governor Kate Brown, uh, Oregon Health Authority Administrator Pat Allen, and Behavioral Health Administrator Steve Allen for inviting me to participate and be a council member uh, uh, October 2019. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, also, I appreciate the opportunity to serve on this council to help bring a greater voice to consumers and peers and survivors across the state to this process. And I was very thankful that they helped accommodate and lift the voices of consumers of your mental health system. Um, so like I said, I'm 100% uh, supportive of this bill, particularly around Medicaid and Oregon tribes, and also the aid and assist parts of this, which I think are crucial. I do wanna say though, um, there was, I, one of the reasons why I was very grateful to participate on this council was to raise the voice of non-clinical voluntary support care homes for people in intermediate forms of psychiatric crisis, i.e. peer respite. Um, and want to just say that I think it's fundamentally important that you as lawmakers understand that three major councils within the state of Oregon, the Oregon Consumer Advisory Council, which was started by the legislature, a legislative mandate in 2010, 25 members endorsed peer respite as something they wanted to see the governor fund in legislative session 2021. Then again, like Steve Allen said, the governor's behavioral health advisory council, two of its work groups and its program and services recommended uh, peer respite in the 2021 legislature. And also, uh, finally, the Ra Governor Brown's Oregon uh, Racial Justice Council also recommended peer respite. So I just want to put that out there, that there was strong support from these three major councils uh, for the uh, issue of peer respite to be heard and ideally funded in this legislative session. want to say, to clear up the record, peer respite is not a substitute for those in severe a danger to themselves or others for hospitalization. But on any given day, especially in the Portland area, uh, there's an awful lot of people who go seeking emergency psychiatric services, but don't need, don't meet medical criteria, but could benefit from something intermediately uh, that gives intermediate supports that's non-clinical. Um, so uh, therefore potentially heading off an episode a week or two later where they, then they do need intensive medical care and uh, supports. Thank you very much, uh, Council uh, Committee uh, and Chair Sanchez for allowing me to testify today. And thanks again so much uh, for Steve Allen and Jackie's leadership of the Governor's Behavioral Health Advisory Council. And it's been one of my, uh, uh, one of my uh, things I'm very proud of is being to, invited to come back and serve on councils, uh, even though people might think you know, that I'm here just to push the consumer viewpoint uh, and they've heard it before. So, uh, but that's me. I'm here to talk about how services impact the consumer and how how we can help those people heal uh, best as possible, given our circumstances. Thank you again. Thank you, Kevin. Actually, your voice is uh, very, very important in this current process and in all the, those processes. The people that the bills and, and the laws that we make in this in the Capitol affect people on the ground, and that is a primary issue, and it should be for everyone here. Um, I want to just check in, uh, Zoe, do we have anybody else who made the list at the last minute or do we, are we good? Uh, no, Madam.